Hey everybody, I'm Stefan from Red Stacklines. I think most of you know me by now. Um, I was asked to uh, have a little talk about Zoom loops, Zoom connections in weddings. So I've prepared some slides and some video footage for you uh, to show what's our recent uh, state in suing weddings. I will show you some destructive tests and what it's about when we uh, sue weddings. Um, I'm slacklining since about 2012, founded Red Slacklines in about 2014. Um, and we started testing this loop stuff and suing stuff at the beginning of this year. We did about 200 um, destructive tests of Zoom connections, Zoom loops, during, this, uh, during the last seven, eight months. So we gained some little insight into this uh, topic and I'd like to share with you what we found out so far. Um, like the last year and the year before, I'd like to have a short break for us to take a look around in the room. I know we had some statistics today shown by Thomas that about 22-23% um, of uh, members of our community are female. I just uh, took count today, it was like 5 girls, 25 guys, so it's like 16.6%. And I hope that we can make ourselves aware that we are not even close to where we should be right now and hopefully find some ways to improve this ratio. So, um, what I'm going to talk about today is how does sewing work. I'm going to show you uh, some difference in yarns, needles, that you can use different sewing patterns, um, like stitch lengths, how all of these factors influence the strength of a loop. What's the difference in between several um, machine types? How we can um, enforce reproducibility of certain swing patterns? And I will compare some loop styles like T loops to Ravida loops. Um, and I'd like an open discussion about the topic how we can connect soon pieces of weddings for big highlight rigs. I think this, uh, this is the big issue in the room to see how we can uh, get this going. And maybe in the end we can talk about uh, soft shackles on Zoom loops, can discuss it a bit. I think Ryan has lots of words, words to say on this, uh, me too. So I hope we will have a, a, an open discussion on all these issues and see how we can uh, find solutions for this. So how does sewing work in the first place? You usually have um, a layer of webbing or two layers of webbing that you want to have connected. And you have a needle pushing into the webbing, you have an upper thread and a lower thread, and you have a mechanism below, so the needle connects two pieces of threads for the webbing, pulls them tight, knots them, and by this mechanism, these two layers of webbing are connected now. There are different kinds of yarns that can be used for sewing webbings. Uh, yarns is not, nothing else like a really, really small, really thin rope. And you can get them in different diameters, different strength, like, like ropes. You can get them made from different materials. You can get them made from nylon, like uh, polyester, from Teflon, or like the Daluma. Uh, you can have them in different uh, twistings. You can have them bonded to each other so they don't uh, have this uh, single filaments getting apart while you sew. You can have them in different coatings, you can have them like Teflon coated so they uh, produce less friction while they go through the webbing and many more vari variables uh, just alone in the topic of yarns. So this is a, a big field uh, that can be, uh, lots of research can be put into this, just alone yarns to make uh, a soon, soon connection uh, strong as it is or weaker than it should be. The same goes for the issue of needles. There's many different needle uh, forms out there. You can have really uh, pointy needles, you can have uh, round tip needles, you can have really sharp needles. And this is the first big issue I'd like to address in this talk that um, when people ask us how should my webbings be soon, where can I bring my webbings to have them soon? Um, I've read it a lot on Slack Chat and other Facebook groups that people recommend, yeah, you can go to a shoemaker, you can go to a sailmaker, you can go to some uh, people like this to have your webbings soon. What most sailmakers and what most shoemakers use 
are needles that are like little knives. They have like really sharp tips. And these tips, they are used for cutting into the leather because normal needles like these ones are not sharp enough to, to penetrate the leather and get through it. Um, but what happens when you bring your webbing to one of these sewing machines and have them sewing this weight is that these sharp tips, they destroy the fiber connection of your webbings. So what you don't want is anyone to sew your webbings with such a needle because the webbing will definitely have a decreased strength afterwards it was sewn with, with such kind of needle. The same goes for this needle tip. This is a really pointy needle and if you use such a needle you can have like a German, it's called a Laufmaschen. Um, you have like uh, the, the single filaments of your webbings are not aligned as perfectly as they uh, were aligned when they went out of the factory. So the way to go is needles with round tips. Uh, these don't destroy the webbing or they destroy the webbing the least way and are known to work best for sewing webbings. Uh, what's really important for needles when you sew webbings is that you should know that if you use a needle in a machine and you put it through the webbing again and again and again and again, like in this uh, pattern it's like about 200 stitches, every needle has um, wear. And when a needle wears off, the tip can become dull. And you can imagine that, that if a dull tip goes through the webbing and goes back up again, it will destroy the fibers. You won't necessarily see this, but of course this will uh, decrease the strength of the webbing. And the same goes for needles that are not obviously dull, but they are just worn out. You can see some microscope pictures down here. Uh, you can see that if the needle was used too often or for too long uh, term, that the, the surface of the needle becomes quite rough and that this also destroys the fiber structure of the webbing. So what you want from somebody who sues your webbing is that he changes the needles quite often to guarantee uh, the maximum uh, of strength from uh, for your webbings. And the next point is sewing patterns. What I've read quite often on uh, Slack chat is, yeah, you could uh, use a bar tech. You could use a bar tech with a certain kind of yarn and just have like six or eight or ten of these bar techs, and you are fine with it. Um, if you buy an, an industrial sewing machine, you will find that uh, by any standard industrial sewing machine that can um, sew Bartex, you will find like about 15 default Bartex patterns that are already programmed into this machine. So um, it's not like you have just have somebody sew a Bartex, but it's also about have somebody sew the right Bartex. So you see like we have uh, different number of stitches, so um, obviously they have a different strength in the end and they have different height and different distances between the stitches and all of these parameters um, can influence the strength of the sewing in the end and of course the, uh, the strength of the webbing that remains. So it's not just like, yeah, have some Bartek sewn in the webbing with this yarn, but it's also uh, the right Bartek and the right size and the right distance to each other to um, guarantee the strength of the webbing afterwards. And there's even more patterns like uh, box stitches or cross stitches and something like this. So um, the, the topic of finding the right sewing pattern is a bit more complex than just uh, sew a bar tech with this yarn. It's, it's, it's a bit under complex uh, to say it this way. Um, in the uh, literature of, on ropes, uh, some years ago there was um, a graphic that showed a comparison of certain sewing patterns, sewing patterns uh, and compared their strength to each other. And you have like uh, Xbox stitches or uh, three bar tags and compare them to a uh, zigzag in the length axis um, soon on a wedding. And they found uh, already years ago that a uh, pattern that has a zigzag stitch on the length axis of the webbing uh, possibly remains the uh, most strength of a sewing pattern that can be sewn to a webbing. So what is important if you sew um, your webbings? It's important that you have 
the right stitch length to. You can vary in any sewing machine the length of a stitch. It means it's uh, the distance between two of these points where the needle penetrates the webbing and the distance that the yarn uh, goes for. So if you have uh, your needle going right in here, going back in here, you don't have the fibers of your webbings connected to each other. You just put some hole into it, put some yarn into it, but the fibers of the webbing are not connected to each other. So what we want is we want a stitch in here, we want the next stitch in here, so we really connect the fibers of the webbing to each other so they can't move anymore when there's uh, tension on the line. So this brings, uh, brings us obviously to the problem how many stitches is the right number of stitches for sewing webbings. We did some tests, we are not finished with our tests yet. We have a pattern that you, most of you probably might have seen in some of our videos before on loops and on Dura La Vida loops. Um, it's like a zigzag in a box and we can produce these pattern with different amount of stitches. Like what we see on the left side here is the same pattern with about 220 stitches. On the right side we have the same pattern with a bigger stitch length and about 140 stitches. And both of these patterns have different strengths, so um, it's important to know uh, if, we sew if, we, if we sew our webbings that we use the right stitching length to, um, to not weaken the webbing as much uh, as we can, but at the, at the same time bring as much yarn into inside of the webbing so that we find the optimum point where the strength is at the optimum, because any stitch obviously reduces the strength of the webbing and not enough stitches don't bring in enough of the yarn so the yarn might break first. I'll show this in um, some videos in some minutes. The next factor that obviously plays a big role <coughs> in sewing webbings is the minimum breaking strength, uh, base breaking strength of the webbing itself. If I have a webbing that's like 35 kN strength, I will not be able to sew this webbing to a strength of 40 kN. So, of course, my, my maybe um, nylon webbing, my nylon tubula, cannot be stronger after I sew it than the base strength of the webbing. And one really important point that I'd like to point out is uh, the reproducibility of certain patterns. I've discussed this with many people in the community during the last weeks, and most of them pointed out that you can have your webbing sewn at many places right now, um, but many of these uh, sewings look different every time that they, have, that they have been produced. What we can see here is a machine uh, by a French tagline company where you can see that uh, not a pattern is sewn, but a, zig but a zigzag is sewn on, the, uh, on this axis of the webbing. So this machine goes back and forth and just sews a zigzag over here. And you can also see this on this machine um, from a guy in Santi, Santi from Spain, I think. Colombia. Colombia. My mistake. He's living. He's living. <laughs> and it's the same here. He has uh, a head that does the zigzag, goes over, and goes back. The next step of, re of reproducibility would be to sew a bar tag that looks the same every time. I try to. You can see it here. The bar tag is sewn. On another axis, the machine does the swing uh, for the person who does the swing. And the next step of reproducibility would be that the whole pattern is sewn at once and is completely reproducible. soon in one step and the uh, errors of uh, manual labor are minimized by this. Nevertheless, uh, I just brought one piece of webbing today to this place. I gave it to Elena 
and my partner saw it. Uh, I didn't see it on my own, and he saw it. And uh, he nevertheless managed to make many mistakes in suing this because he's not um, too, um, how to say it, too experienced uh, by using the machine yet. So I have to redo this work. So even if you have a machine that does most parts of the work for you, this does not mean at all that there must be a perfect result in the end. So I think uh, we should be careful by giving out webbings for having some loops in them, in them to people who are not experienced in uh, sewing webbings. We should uh, definitely look out for all the other factors that I mentioned before, like needles, yarns, patterns, etc. Uh, I think the issue is definitely a bit more uh, complex than we might expect. Nevertheless, we managed to uh, develop a pattern that, uh, that uh, if it's done right, uh, shows, uh, shows a strength of about 30 kN uh, and breaks at a little bit more than 30 kN. I can show it to you here. What is the base strength? Once what again? Say, what, 36. The, the base strength of the webbing is? 36. Yeah. Um, our recent goal is to improve the pattern and uh, to bring the strength of this sewing connection higher to gain uh, about 59 or maybe even 100% of strength in the end. This is what we are doing right now, what we are working on right now. But I think this is still uh, a long way to go to reach this goal. Um, what we can see here is a Bartik connection that looks quite well in the beginning. But what happens here is not that the webbing itself breaks, like it's happened in here, but what happens is that the bar tech, but the, that the bar techs themselves rip up because one or maybe more of the parameters that I showed before have been used wrong. These bar tags didn't look too bad before. They look like this in the first place. I don't think they look too bad, but as we can see, they break at about 65% of the original breaking strength of the webbing. So even if you have some bar tags <coughs> soon in your webbings, this does not mean at all that this must be strong despite they look quite well. Um, have you tested those with a bigger loop? Yes. Okay. Same. Same. Okay. It's, uh, it's about the strength of the pattern, the strength of the yarn, uh, and uh, the other factors that I showed in the beginning. Um, it's not about the size of the loop in this case. I see a bigger one here. Um, I found five does break the, the stitching. Mm -hmm. Seven does not. Mm -hmm. Nine gives you this much more, and then it's like irrelevant after that. Yeah. This, this was uh, six bar tags, and we also went up to eight bar tags. What we can find is when we use eight bar tags, it breaks the webbing, not the stitches anymore, by the same uh, yarn and the same patterns used. But um, the point that I want to state out uh, by this video, just having bar tags soon does not mean that it's necessarily strong enough that you can safely highlight on it. What we also tested is T loops. <laughs> this was a T loop tested in the lab. I can also hand it around. This was this one. The loop itself was created by Parsec webbing. The main webbing was uh, rainbow webbing. We used the pattern that I already showed you before, this uh, blue pattern here that we found the strongest in our loops so far. Um, the breaking strength of this uh, T loop was at about 18.6 kN. What, what is your thread material? It's Danima. We, we, we use Danima as the yarn in this blue pattern, and the green patterns are uh, polyester yarn. And you can't have bonded Danima, right? Because you can't it up. Um, it's bonded by a chemical process, oh, okay. but it's not perfectly bonded. We see during the sewing process that the bonding is not really perfect. Okay. So the, the polyester yarn that we use 
uh, is way better bonded than the than the ion piece. So what we the next step that we went for was uh, creating the dura la vida loops that probably most of you have already seen in the video I posted like two or three weeks ago, or they also lie up over there. Um, we tested them to more than 30 kilonewtons, depending on the webbing, uh, into both directions. And we also now use them as a redundant uh, loop, so you can have a main loop in this loop and the backup loop of this loop. I also have this round. This one broke at about 34, 34 and a half, I think, kilonewtons. So, uh, so you could rig off of hmm? You could rig off not just as your backup. Yes, we, we um, use them also as a main loop. Main. So we have a backup loop. The, the original loop is in this example. Yeah. This loop can be the backup loop, and this can be the main loop to rig off, because it has, it has a strength of about 40, 34 kilometers. Ah. Um, but all of this comes with a price. One of our customers called me some days ago and asked, okay, if I want to have a, a high line, the line is about 160 meters long, but only 20 meters high. Um, how can I rig this? Can I rig this? Is this possible? And he asked me about a, th a certain um, style. So we have uh, parsec webbing, dual meter loops in the parsec webbing and uh, additional sewing connections between main and backup at one third of the 50 meter piece and two thirds of the 50 meter piece uh, addition. Um, this of course comes with a price. Uh, if you buy like 100 meters of all plastic webbing, you pay like 99 euros. But if you have the sewing work in addition to this, you end up like 106, uh, 196 euros. So the price nearly doubles for uh, getting the sewing work done. So this is also definitely a factor that must be uh, calculated in by talking about these uh, concepts of uh, sewing connections for big high lines. This definitely is a, a money game. So uh, if we talk about this making lines better, safer by having sewing connections, this definitely um, is an issue that not every highliner around the world might be able to afford. Um, what we see right now is different um, methods of connecting webbing pieces uh, to each other to rig big lines. We have this dual la vida method that I showed some minutes ago. We have the enough split that Brian is a big fan of. We have the Y2K method from selectivity. Um, so if you would like to discuss on this, um, maybe let's open the room for a bit of discussion. Or, yeah, maybe if there are any I questions. just used or was on Y2K at asbestos, okay. and I liked it. <laughs> I, I don't mind having the backup attached a meter away from the, from the main mm -hmm. so It's just not, like you said, the cost thing was uh, mm -hmm. the biggest thing. Um, and it's not available from all weddings, from all companies. It's not like Universal, which is with. But I liked having it felt like butter. So I have not tried this Dura Lavita. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, any one else with opinions, questions about these uh, connection types? Has anybody used Enum Split in here? No? Okay, I should just push it harder. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Then I've uh, you said come how not to, to highlight no one's using it. When I come to the last point uh, of my talk, it's uh, soft shackles on Su loops. I think most of you have seen the video that I made about it, and I bring you some more of it because the question was what happens if a loop is padded. same place at about 14 kilonewton. The padded webbing broke at uh, 17 point something kilonewtons. 
and we also tested some other webbings. Some other webbings. Why not? Slides are missing. That's okay. I'm sorry, there are some slides missing on the stick in this presentation. Okay, I'm gonna tell you. Um, this is the webbing that broke uh, the padded loop at about um, 17 kilonewtons. The loop was padded, the soft shackle was not padded. How strong is the webbing? The webbing is uh, 24 kilonewtons. Have you tried it with the uh, shackles? Same, same. Yeah, same, same, same means that uh, we, if we use a shackle, the webbing breaks uh, in the stitching part. So, so okay. definitely stronger, much stronger, like at about 21, 22, something like this. And, and what was it breaking out with the soft shackle again? Hmm? What did it break with the soft shackle? Uh, 17 point something. Um, what you can see is that it broke. It broke in the loop. You can see it in this example over here. The loop was padded, but the loop itself broke here. So obviously not the stitching part was the issue, but this part broke. So obviously it's weaker here than it's normally breaking. And we did the same test with the padded loop on our parsing webbing. Base strength is 35 kilonewtons. This broke at about 22, 23-ish kilonewtons. Also, the loop was padded, but the soft shackle was not padded. Then we did the same test with padded loops and padded soft shackles. Normally, we could see this in the slides now as a video. I'm sorry, this must have gone missing somewhere between the transpiration of the presentation between my laptop and this laptop. Uh, this is the piece that was tested with a padded loop and a padded soft shackle down here. The soft shackle was padded with uh, MOTM webbing too. Um, and here finally the webbing broke where it's supposed to break in the stitching part so the webbing itself uh, gave up. We did this test multiple times so you can see this result is repeatable. Um, so the, the base, um, the basic um, gain of insight here is that if you connect soft shackles to your soon loops make sure that the loop is padded, make sure that the soft shackle is well padded, because otherwise the loop breaks at a lower strength than it's supposed to be. The diameter of the soft shackle? Mm -hmm. Six millimeter um, Dyna 1 in the traditional soft shackle style. I have to see if I have one here. <coughs> My friend just came up with a really neat way to pad the you know, split because you know how you have to go through the middle. Mm -hmm. So basically it's two short pieces of padding that allows you to go through the center of it. So there is a way to technically pad the you know, split. Mm -hmm. um, he likes doing that. I don't use the traditional shackles mm -hmm. and I believe that's why I've never been able to reproduce the mm -hmm. But what, my, yeah. Yeah, what we use is the traditional style of soft shackles and this produces these values. And you have diamond knots. Diamond knots, diamond knots uh, in a single strand spliced uh, for the splicing part of the uh, of the soft chain. So it's yeah, only one strand. Diamonds come up, the tails come up, yeah. whereas the button, the tails go down. So I get twice the, the, the material inside. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, there should be three or four more of these slides with things breaking. <laughs> they went lost, so I'm sorry, I can't show you this. Um, so there's room for questions. <laughs>